Okay, great. All right, everybody. Uh, today is September 29, 2022. And we are here tonight with Matthew, who is going to talk to us about um, a process that he's involved with that will shut down a court case, a civil court case, um, right in its tracks. So if some company is suing you or your neighbor or somebody and they send you a court summons, Matt here is going to show us how we can use that court summons to actually stop that case right in its tracks. So, Matt, welcome. Hi, Ted. Thanks for having me. So um, tell us a little bit about this process, um, what you've done before and uh, how it's worked and everything. Okay. So um, basically when you get something in the mail, it's a presentment, right, albeit a, a traffic citation, um, a piece of mailing, a summons, anything, right? It's all a, a, a contract, right? So what you okay. need to do here is you need to – Get this thing away from you as fast as possible, if you will. And according to the Truth in Lending Act, you have 72 hours. This will still work even after 72 hours, but you want it as quickly as possible to give them back the hot potato. So when you get something mailed, let's say you get a summons. I'm going to give this example. You get a summons from the court. Okay, uh, Somebody is suing you and you, you you get it in the mail, you look at it, you open it, and you start to panic, oh, no, they're suing me, what do I do, what do I do? Okay, if you hold on to that, you are presumed to have accepted it, okay, because you didn't return it to them. So this is a very easy process, but it has to be done a particular way. What you do is you open it. Okay, great. You take your red marker and you write refuse for cause on the front of it, okay? There's a sheet of paper that you're supposed to print out that has two paragraphs on it, okay, that we have. And it's got wording on it. You don't do anything to it. The only thing that you do is you write the certified mail number on the top. You put that in with the summons, Okay, remember, you had the summons, you put refused for cause on it. You put this paper in, put it back in the envelope, put refused for cause on the envelope, take that envelope now, and put it in another envelope. And then, You're then, then there's a certain to, way that you treat that envelope, but... Um, that's correct. Right, but we'll go over that, that later. Go ahead. Right. You put that in another envelope, okay? And you put the two address from the court, the from address to the court. The addresses are the exact same to the court. Right. And you're going to send that certified mail. Okay? The faster you get this out, the better. They're going to receive it, and they're going to look at it, and they're going to say, well, um, he refused our offer. Okay, let's send it to him again. They may send it to you another time or two more times. You do the exact same thing. You rinse and repeat. Now, what this will do is this will stop the summons. This will stop the suit in its tracks. I can guarantee you this. I've used it several times. Friends of mine have used it dozens of times. This works guaranteed, I'm telling you, all day, every day. And it's not a thick, long, heavy process. It's super simple. And you just mail it and forget about it. Wow. So what kind of cases does it work on? Okay, so it's really effective for summons that you get in the mail, you know, if you're being sued. Because I, I got sued by a contractor, and uh, I first paid him in Colombian pesos. Okay, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Right. And then after, <laughs> yeah, I paid him in Colombian pesos because they use the, the dollar symbol with the superimposed I through it. I paid him a Colombian pesos. Well, I told him, I said, if he didn't agree with it to, re to return it within 10 days, he never did. So he accepted. 
And then afterwards, they called me screaming at me three weeks later that uh, I only paid them uh, $2.70 when the bill was you know, $12,000, $10,000. So, but that's another story of why I did that to them. So anyhow, he sued me, and when I was getting stuff in the mail, that's my process that I used, and it works every single time. So how many other people have um, done this? Oh, man, a lot. A lot of people on my side and my group have done it. Okay, so what kind of cases? Um, Okay, like uh, I have a friend of mine who got a speeding ticket. They mailed him, you know, those red light cameras that get you right there, make it light on red or something like that. He got it in the mail, right? He took a picture of it and sent it to me. I said, well, what are you going to do? I said, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And um, so he used the process, sent it to them, never heard back from them again. Now, what does that do to your driving record? Okay, so what this does is this stops the action cold in its tracks where they can't move forward. I'm not saying that it's not sitting there on the docket. I'm sure it still is. And until it gets old enough or it expires, then it falls off. Okay, so how old is old enough? A couple I weeks? Say maybe, I would say maybe it'll sit there one year, two years, and then fall off. Because my buddy, who's done this many more times than I have, Okay. Let me tell you, he's got eight tickets on his record and three failure to appear and no arrest warrant. And the last time he got pulled over, he handed him a, you know, he doesn't ride with insurance or uh, driver's license or anything like that. He handed him a a credit card, and the guy came back and said, um, (laughs) I got to laugh about this because this is hilarious. Okay. How do you have eight um, tickets on your record and three failure to appear and no arrest warrant? And he said, well, you're going to be number nine. And then the guy said, he handed it back to him and said, have a nice day. And then he just <laughs> laughed. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And um, so this, this, this process is super easy, and it works all the time, all the time. For okay. any presentment, anything, all day, every day. Well, uh, anything that's civil, right? To my understanding, so far, yes, we haven't used it on anything other than that, just like okay. you know, being sued and some, some minor okay. traffic situations. So to be clear, if you have a traffic situation, you still may have a traffic ticket on your driving record. Is that correct? Yeah, you may still have that. Okay, so like if you're a CDL driver and you want to avoid that, this process may not be for you. Yeah. But okay. here's the thing, though. You don't have to pay for it. Okay, let's say let's say when they run your record, you know, like the police will run the license, they'll see this, but they can't do anything about it. So it just sits there dead like a vessel at the water, just dead floating out there until it eventually rots and sinks and in this case, just falls off your record. You don't have to pay the tickets. You don't have to go to court. Um, yeah, this, this process is amazing. All right. So uh, why don't we open it up for questions, I think. What are, what are questions? Star 2? Is that what it is? Oh, crud. Broadcaster conference. I think it's... It might be star three on your phone. If you have any questions. Okay, where's the... Oh, 
man. See, I forgot about that. I forgot how to... How to maybe it's star six. Oh, look at, there we go. Somebody's got their... Jeanette's got a question here. Or she did. I went... Hello? Yes. What did you push, star two or star three? I pushed star six, and then it asked me to push one to confirm that I wanted to ask a question. Okay, star six. There we go. Okay, so what is your question? Okay, uh, I'm wondering about the, the sheet that he included with it, with the two paragraphs. Um, could you go into a little bit more about that, or how we get a, a copy of it so we can read it? So, right. So what we what we'd like is for um, we want to work with you, and that's part of our one-on-one -on -one coaching. We're not charging for that at this time. So um, if you have a case, then you can contact me, and we'll kind of review it to see if this is going to be a good fit, and then we'll go over it with you. Oh, I see. Okay, and I can let you know that by email. You go to the website. You have the right dot com. And then go to the contact link and contact me, and uh, then we'll get in touch with you. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. You bet. Let's see. Uh, okay, 919, I think you have a question. Hello? Yes. Go right ahead. Hey, guys. I don't have an active... Uh, case right now. I just was curious on what you guys had to say, but I'm wondering, can he go over the steps of the process one more time so I make sure I have it right? Yeah, sure. So, step one, you receive something in the mail, right? You open it. You don't tear the letter apart. You open it gently. You read it. You don't like it. You write refused for cause on the front. Put the paper that me and Tad were talking about, the one sheet of paper, put that in there with it. Put it back in the envelope. Take that envelope, put it in another envelope. Put the from and the to address the same as the courthouse. Seal it up, take it to the post office, send it certified mail. It's really that simple. So you put the same address for the from and the to on the envelope that you're mailing it to. Correct. That way they can't refuse it. Yeah, they certainly can't refuse it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Any more questions? Uh, not for me. She already right. asked the other question I had. I was uh, wondering where I get that sheet of paper. Well, it's that's actually part of the, There's a little bit more to the process than um, what we're saying, It's but that's kind of the heart of it. So if you have a case, if you have been served, uh, get with us right away. So for the future, if you have any kind of a problem or if you've been served a summons, get back to us. All right, so we'll go on to um, uh, 270 area code. 270, go ahead. You've just been unmuted. Two seven zero. Going three times. Okay. Uh, well, can you hear me? Uh, uh, there we go. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. Go Sorry ahead. about that. I, I forgot I had my phone on mute, so I wouldn't bother you when you were speaking a while ago. I kind of pushed the button, wouldn't let me get out of it. But anyway, uh, so. Any any civil matter then, right? Correct. Uh, 
would that include like uh, credit cards or even have you had any dealings with the foreclosure stuff there? Okay, that's a great question. Um, a lady had contacted me about, I want to say about six weeks ago for this. And she was being sued by, I don't know, American Express. I want to see if I can remember. Capital One or American Express, one of those. She owed like ten grand. And here was the funny thing, was that she didn't know she was being sued. What had happened was is that they filed the case. American Express filed the case into the record to have a court case against her. Well, she just started getting bombarded with all these offers from these attorneys Hey, you're being, we understand you're being sued by so and so, uh, and uh, for this much, and um, please hire us to to help you. And she was like, "What?" So she had reached out to me, and and I told her, I said, "Okay, this is exactly what you're going to do." And she followed everything of what I told her to do, and she got served like they actually served her at her house. Uh, the papers, and she called me immediately, and I told her, you know, exactly what to do, and she did it, and I told her, I said, listen, when you hear back, if you get anything in the mail from these guys, or you get served, you call me immediately. It's been six weeks now, maybe close to eight weeks. I haven't heard anything from her. So, Mm. and I, I had done a notary stamp for her maybe about three, four weeks ago, I would say about three weeks ago, and she didn't bring up anything, and I have forgot to ask her about it. So I'm assuming, presuming that, you know, she did that, and they didn't come back and try to do it again, okay? Because sometimes they'll try to test you and send it to you a second time or maybe even a third time. You do the exact same process over and over again. They will go away, okay? And this is what happened with her. Now, with the mortgage that you're talking about now, it has not yet been tested on the mortgage. However, I'm still thinking that this uh, this can still work the same way. Um, do you live in a judicial foreclosure state or a non-judicial foreclosure state? Uh, judicial. So in order for them to foreclose on you, the the servicer has to bring a suit and take you to court and then... Um, serve you, and then then get you evicted, right? Yes, and they did in 2019. Okay. But I have another friend up in the... I'm sorry, go ahead. About that. If you go into their courts, you've already lost. And the best way is to stay out of it. This is why it's so important to handle these uh, issues up front while it's a seed. You don't want to deal with it when it's a full-grown tree. You want to get it right at the beginning, okay? And, yeah. you know, people will call me and ask for this or ask for that, and I, I'm i being foreclosed on in three days. What can I do? I'm like, oh, my God. Um, I don't think I, I don't have the time. I can't do anything. Now, you know, if you called me and said, hey, I just got summoned, you know, for uh, them taking my house. They're going to foreclose on me. I just got summoned. I said, okay. This is what we can do, and we could go from there, you know. But I, I can't, I can't do anything for anybody, you know. Three days a day before um, they do that, and it has not yeah. yet been tested. I want to reiterate that it's not yet been tested on uh, foreclosure summons. However, I do strongly believe that if it's like any other court case, it, the same thing will happen. They'll try to serve you, and they'll, they'll maybe try to serve you like they did to me like three times. The sheriff came out. I wasn't home at the time. My brother answered the door. And then the two other guys came afterwards trying to serve me like three weeks apart. They couldn't get anything done. So um, with your situation, you know, being a foreclosure, I if somebody out, if somebody's out there and they're facing foreclosure and they just got served, I believe – based on, you know, the research, the experience, that this uh, would work uh, on that. Okay. But it's not yet been tested. So uh, I, I need somebody willing to uh, test this on. You know, I hate to okay. say I'd be a guinea pig, but 
Um, but I know this yeah. process works. It just hasn't been tested in this particular example. Right. Well, there's a lot at stake with uh, the house. Correct. So in other words, it would probably be a good idea, to, as long as it was a new summons, then it would probably work. Right. Okay. Now, here's, here's right. the thing, right? Here's the thing, right? Um. When you get summoned, you know, okay, you, you're unable to pay the mortgage. Well, they give you a month, two months. I think it's after 90 days, if I'm not mistaken, they then begin the foreclosure proceedings, right? Because then at that 91st yep. day, that's when they get paid and they file the insurance money and, and all this stuff. Then they begin the foreclosure proceeding, and then they try to get you out of that house as fast as possible. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know what your particular experience was. Would you mind um, running that through, if you don't mind? As far as what was, what do you mean? Like, uh, what happened in your foreclosure? Oh, well, uh, it began for me in 2011, and uh, March 3rd, 2011. And they filed a bunch of paperwork, uh, but the paperwork was flawed. It didn't have an assignment. Uh, they didn't produce the note. Uh, although the judge ramrodded me over through everything and uh, got my dismissed my, uh, I just can't think of the proper term for that, affirmative answers okay. and defenses. And uh, they got rid of that. You know, they did all the things where they held hearings without notifying me, uh, you know, didn't send me everything. And then they uh, produced a forged note. And after I uh, challenged them on it, uh, they uh, withdrew their case or dismissed their own case. By a year later in 2016, they brought it back under another company uh, it was a different company than what my the assignee or what the mortgage claim lender was that was you know recording the office or in the recorder's office, and uh, they said it was a trust uh, for Deutsche Bank National Trust Company. It was a uh, Soundview Trust, and uh, which I found out the SEC they told me it was uh, registered in the state of Delaware. Uh, when I called them up after she gave me the number, found out it wasn't listed there, never had been listed, and uh, Deutsche Bank has no registration there in that state either. And uh, just four signatures, you name it, I found out about it, and they were just just dismissed everything and still went on with the foreclosure. It was just... Uh, uh, it's the same people Jesus dealt with in 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know how else to say it, but yeah, took my house and stuff, and about three years ago, and I've still been doing research on what they've done or haven't done or hadn't complied with and all that stuff. I'm still researching all that right now. Yeah, kind of a long-winded case, so I'm going to tell you. Yeah, they'll they'll do that. I've heard of that them doing all those kind of things. So, so we sell it to somebody else, and somebody else will come after you. Yeah, this is the thing you want to. Here's the thing: when they bait you into these court cases, they want you to file paperwork in. Now you're granting jurisdiction, um, and then you're getting sucked into this, you know, this uh, uh, spider trap, if you will, you know. Yep. Um, and this is what they do. You know, you take one step in there, and they grab you, and you know. Now they're they're whipping you in a dungeon now, and you don't know what's happening. Um, and that's what these courts are. They fleece you in yeah. these courts. There's no remedy uh, in these courts, and that's why you got to handle it as much as possible out of the court. Right. And this is what this process will do. Okay. All right. Because well, um, when you receive those summons, remember when you receive those summons, right? You didn't return yep. it. So the court said, hey. Um, they they baited you into a fight, 
when you when you didn't know there was a third option where you could have just said, no, nah, I don't want to play with you guys and just return it to them. You didn't know that, okay? Nope. They got you so stressed. And I, dude, I've been a victim of this, okay? Trust me, okay? I was jailed five days uh, over a speeding ticket as well, uh, and, and I was hammering the judge. You know, the, the guy kept running away, and, and uh, I didn't know what was going on in there, but not to change the subject here, but I know exactly – being rail ro- railroaded, I was railroaded and dragged out of there in chains. Okay, um, and I spent five days in jail. That's a fact. Um, yeah. And originally they wanted fifty days, but yeah, my commanding officer called down there and uh, got me out in five days. But still, I I learned a lot when that happened. Um, so yeah, um, that's why you want to handle yeah. these as quickly as possible. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate you calling about all that. I'm you're sorry? welcome. I said never I play with these guys. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Thank you. Okay, so you guys, if you have any questions, uh, star six on your phone. And we have somebody, 310 area code. Go ahead. Three one zero, your phone just unmuted. Well, I guess not. Okay, two seven zero again. Do you still have a question? Uh, well, I didn't select anything. I was just okay. <laughs> I was still moving. All right, I'm I'm still learning the system. All right, thank you. Okay, um. You guys, if you have any more questions, hit star six on your phone. Um, Otherwise, if you do, if you are served a lawsuit, a civil lawsuit, not necessarily a traffic ticket, but a a lawsuit, and you need help with it, contact us immediately at youhavetheright.com, Y-O-U, havetheright.com, and we will work with you on this. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's it. So, star six if you have any questions. I guess not. Um, I will... I will make another call for questions. And if not, oh, there we go. We have a question. Hold on. Two of them. How about that? Okay, six zero eight. Go right ahead. Hello, can you hear me? I can. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, I have a question um, regarding the IRS. If uh, I I don't have any issues right now, but if I happen to get any any uh, requests in the mail for information or uh, auditing or anything like that. What's the best way to handle it, considering they've just employed 87,000 new agents yeah. coming after us? So uh, I, I want to know how to deal with this situation. Okay, the IRS is not like, let me say this, okay? The IRS, um, I don't want to use the word, let me say this loosely, because uh, this is a lot to chew when you're dealing with the IRS. This is not like a court case or a debt collector. You can get them to go away. This is the IRS. Uh, Most of us may never uh, be rid of them, okay? Um, And we've used this on the IRS. We've used it. They will keep coming back. You'll hear from them eight months later again, and you'll do the process again on them, and then you'll hear from them again, you know, a year later, like uh, they don't go away, okay? But, you can get them off your back for now and buy them off, uh, buy you time. Um, the best thing regarding the IRS, I would have to say, is uh, ask them, agree with them, and say, okay, uh, I see that um, you are saying I owe you this debt, and I'm here to pay this lawful debt. Can you please show me, pursuant to A through Z, all these points here, 
uh, how and why and where and so on, and you have uh, uh, 60 days to comply, uh, should you not comply, um, you will deem that you have no claim and that this debt is, um, not, this alleged debt is null and void. And, you know, you send a certified mail return receipt. Um, that will be the best way I would do it. And send them one mailing. That's it. And have everything you need to say in that mailing. Um, so do you have an IRS issue right now? No, I don't. Nope. No? Okay. I um, um, I just have a bit of a paranoia about it, you know. And <laughs> sure, um, a lot of people do. A lot of yeah. people do, and uh, you have every right to be paranoid. So, yeah. who do you think these guys are coming after? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have another way to deal with them that involves uh, a simple process with the U.S. tax court. Uh, but you know, now, like, now, do you like, have this on your on your website where I can just take a look at it? Um, because I'm not going to remember all this. Uh, I'm trying to write it down, but I can't uh, get the details. Well, quick enough. Well, yeah, what Matt just said is kind of an overview. I I don't have anything on that particularly, but yeah. we we do have a U.S. tax court process. We get them yeah. to admit that they didn't follow their own procedures. Yeah, and that's a very powerful tool. But even then. It, they don't necessarily go away, but they might just leave you alone. Yeah. yeah. Let me give you an example. I had a friend of mine. He defeated the IRS in 2004 in tax court, completely defeated yeah. them. Yeah. And, well, 10 years later, they came, oh, excuse me, eight years later, they came back and they yeah. seized his duplex. Yeah. Okay. They seized his up and just seized his duplex and said, you owe this much, and they came through and seized his duplex because he had some properties he was renting. Seized his yeah. duplex and then seized one of his bank accounts. Okay, yeah. He was furious. Okay, yeah. That's why, what I was saying is, is that you can get them to be gone and off your back Okay, for now, but mm – -hmm. They they will come back at some point with something new, or they'll twist something, or hand it off to a yeah. new guy, uh, an overzealous yeah. agent that wants to make a name for himself, and you know, yeah. and they'll break their own procedure and regulation just to do it. I mean, yeah, they're yeah, pretty rough. Really organization. Right, and this is off topic, but this is why it's so important to have your assets in trust or in right. some entity. Yeah, some entity. And, exactly. and that's something else I can help you with as well, getting your assets out of your name and it's something you control. And if you even right. think you're going to have an IRS problem, jump on that. Uh, go to yeah. youhavetheright.com and contact me, and we'll we'll go over it with you. Okay. So yeah. does that answer your question? Yeah, that's, that's pretty helpful, yeah. All right, Thanks. thank you very much. So let's see. Uh oh Six zero eight. Yeah, I think was, I'm still connected. Okay, all right, thanks. Um, Seven one four, go ahead. Hello, how are you? Hey there, what's going on? Oh, everything's good. Um, I missed the first five minutes of the um, class, so I was just wondering if you would. Um, reiterate what you were um, talking about being a, a guinea pig with this thing. What, what exactly are you doing? Because I was a guinea pig for Lynn Meredith in Vultures and Needs of Eagles Clothing. You were talking about the IRS. I got a letter back from them, and I was out of the system for like 14 years. According to the, the evidence you gave us, you were no longer required to file. So I kind of like the guinea pig situation, if you could explain huh. it to me. Uh, well, are you in foreclosure? I actually have already been foreclosed on. I have a case okay. going, but um, okay. I I've got well, it pretty well the, handled. The guinea pig reference was, was to using this process with a foreclosure, a judicial foreclosure hearing. So, and so, 
so that's not you, so I don't think that would really work. Otherwise, with other cases, no, it's not a guinea pig at all. It's, um, as Matt said, it's been quite effective with other um, civil lawsuit matters. Um, now, with traffic tickets, it works, but it's not very clean. Uh, you'll still have a ticket on your record, and so for that reason, I'm not going to recommend it for that. But just for lawsuits, if somebody's suing you, this method uh, works fantastic. So does that answer your question? Okay. Well, I have a tenant. I'm going to have her get in touch with you. She's got somebody squatting on her, so she's renting a place for me, and the judge can't seem to get them out, and now they've turned around and sued her. She's just freaking out. She's at work right now. So if I could get a copy of the recording, that would be great. Okay, I'm going to see what I can do to put it up on YouTube in a couple of days. Okay. Okay, um, I yield. So, so ha- well, has she answered the summons at all? Uh, she just got it yesterday. So. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah, just have her go to youhavetheright.com and contact me ASAP. Okay. okay? And what is your name? Oh, I'm Tad. T-A-D. Tad. Yes. Okay. Mad Tad. Let's get it done. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Thank I you. yield. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Five eight. S- okay, wait a minute. Okay. I gotta figure this out. Okay. Five eight six area code. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Ted, I was uh, wondering um, how much is the process to um, uh, to get it done, the civil um, case you guys are working on. Also, is it for all civil cases that you guys are doing? You represent for the, for the uh, process you're doing? Okay, so we're not, at this time, we're not charging anything. Okay. Um, and it's, I'm going to say many civil cases i won't say all like we said before um we have not tried this with a foreclosure okay and with with a foreclosure that's obviously a high stakes game okay so um, that's the only thing you're not doing the, the foreclosures anything else that's excluded from the, the uh, whole process besides foreclosures what was that so it's only foreclosures that you're not really dealing with Everything else is pretty much excluded. I mean, like included to deal with for the civil cases. Matt. So we're using this on all civil cases. Um, okay. We just haven't tested it out yet on the foreclosure yet because we haven't had an opportunity uh, for someone to say, "Yeah, I'll I'll test this out." Okay. Okay. I think you answered my question. All right. Thank you. Okay, 626, go ahead. Hi there. Um, Hello. All right. This, hi. So this sounds like a um, a lot for personal civil cases. What about for um, if you, it's to an entity that you already have? Does it still work this way? Mm, good question. Okay. Um, give me a little background. What do you mean? Could you clarify? Um, so I had a space that I rented um, as a business and then had to break the lease. And I also had a promissory note due to the landlord who was actually helping me out. She actually loaned me money during COVID. Um, and then we got served with a lawsuit um, for – then I broke the lease. and But the lease is not personally guaranteed. It's not even guaranteed by my entity. Um, that's now being sued, and um, so like, I'm trying to keep it short. So the other thing that happened is, so with the prom, there's a promissory note that's signed that I did secure with some personal collateral, right? For like, it's like for like 67k, but then she is actually going after like almost 200k for you know the rent through the end of my lease, which was like nine months. I broke it nine months early. Um, and then, you know, legal fees and all, all this kind of stuff. So we got that lawsuit, you know, in, you know, four or five months ago. And I actually have an attorney that's already dealing with that part. 
But then on Saturday of this last week, um, we she uh, we got served by a process server. So not in the in the mail. I got served at home by a process server. Um, so I couldn't like not take it. I mean, I've, I've been trying to avoid it for like months and months, but they finally caught up to me, gave me the um, the service, which my attorney knows about, but. Um, and this is for a writ of attachment for just the 67K part. And my father-in-law gave me your information, and I was like, Dad, I don't think it's going to work. Like, for like, what's going on? We already have a lawyer, but I just thought I'd ask to see. It's it's good information, even if it doesn't okay. work, what other things you're talking about. So, yeah. Okay, so, so first off, that's fantastic. You were served in person. Um, how long ago were you served? Uh, on Saturday. Oh. Okay, so that's what a few yeah. days ago, right? What's today? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So you, so they've got the case going. When you go into that case, I can guarantee you, you're going to lose. All right. I'm going to um, lose on that one. Yeah. You're going to lose. You're going to lose on that. They're going to bring in all this information, so on and so forth. You're going to lose. Uh, somehow, some way, you're going to lose. Maybe you won't have all your lunch eaten, but maybe half of it'll get eaten. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, you're going to lose. All right. Um, so, what have you done with that paperwork yet? The way you're summoned. Um, so you're no, I mean, I, I stand, I stand the front page, and I send, yeah, summons, and uh, send it to my attorney. So, okay. So wait, wait. So who who is being summoned? Who is the suit against? You. Um, or your company? Not me personally, against my um, my entity, one of my entities that rented. What is space. your entity? What is an entity? A corporation? It's an S corp. Yeah. California S corp. It actually has yeah. no ass. Well, it doesn't. That's not exactly true. Well, it has equity in another company that I started, but it now looks like that company is going under as well. So it's got like, and that's what that's the collateral is the equity in the uh, the company that may or may not be solvent. I'm working on something to get it solvent, but <laughs> it's, if that doesn't work, then, the, like, that's the only collateral, like, that's on, that's, that's on there. I mean, we did put some, like, personal affects, but they're not okay. worth right. with the C7K. So, like, I basically so have Matt, no assets, so. <laughs> Matt, um, mm -hmm. an escort? Okay. I mean, I, I can oh, talk to you guys there? personally this week if it's too complicated. Yeah, yeah I'm still here. No, this is a good yeah. question. No, this is a great question. Um, this has not yet been tested on your particular situation. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking right now. Okay, because I was under the impression that you were you were being uh, uh, summoned personally, uh, not your corporation. Okay, so my understanding is... Okay, I have a few Let me look at it. I'm almost positive it's to the company, but they might have like put me on there because I put up personal collateral to the promissory note. Let me see. I put up that personal I have collateral. It. Uh, you, it says, if you put up that personal collateral, they may be able to come after that, especially if you put like a house or a car. Or, no, know. no, not a house. Yeah, it was it, it was a car, um, but the car is not even in my name. But my husband is half the entity. It's in his. It's in his name. Let me look. I'm just saying. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Rid of attachment. Yeah. No, they are actually suing. Why are they suing me? Maybe because it's my personal collateral. So the the first lawsuit we got, the bigger one for like two hundred thousand, like a few months ago. That one we've just been kicking the can with my attorney and just like not dealing with it because they're just asking for way too much on a lease that I didn't guarantee or anything. But now they're just like, okay, we're not going to get that, so we're going to go after the 67k. And this one actually, sorry, this one actually is just to my name. There you go. There you go. But how can they do Where that when the the note, the promissory note, is with my entity? They're it's attorneys. not me personally. Yeah, but who cares? So, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all that matters is it's in your name, and they're going to come yeah. after you. Okay? Okay. So you've got to handle this ASAP. Okay. okay. Fire your attorney. Fire your attorney. I know, right? That, that's what my father-in-law was saying. I should fire I should Your father-in-law is hmm. smart. Your father-in-law <laughs> is smart. 
Okay. Fire your attorney. All right, so I and call and, you tomorrow. Uh, get with us. <laughs> yeah, get with us so we can uh, talk to you more about your particulars. Absolutely, fire your attorney. Yeah. Uh, hey, what hey. he's been doing over the last six, seven months is he's been dragging this out and dragging this out. They do that in order to milk you. Okay. And this yeah. gets me fired up because I know what these guys are doing. They just prolong it and prolong this this gas fire, if you will, uh, they so they can make more money. Because every time you call him or he talks to you, it's this much, this much you got to pay him. So he, they, yeah. he string along all their clients. Fire him immediately, definitely. Um, her, but yeah, it's her. Um, okay. Or her, yeah, right. of course. Fire her immediately and, uh, yeah, contact us so we can go into detail uh, and explain more of this for you. Okay, so you guys aren't attorneys, though. No. No, we're not. I don't care. Fine, I'm not, I'm not, like, stuck on attorneys, but I'm, I'm just curious no, your background. No, uh, we're not attorneys. Uh, we're not attorneys. Uh, we're allowed to tell the truth. Yeah, now, here's this. I had a judge in one of my cases ask me if I was an attorney. I told him I would never sell my soul to the devil, and he <laughs> went ballistic. He went ballistic. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, and then I told him uh, this is a kangaroo court, and then after that, that's what I think uh, he lost it, and they dragged me out of there and put me in chains and arrested me. Oh, my God. Really? That's when you yeah, spent your time in God. jail? I swear to God. I that's a good him, story. Here's You're what a I said to him here. <laughs> Just just as a side note here, not to change the subject, so I was fighting my speeding ticket, and this is when I was first getting into this many years ago. And um, he was saying something, sit down, shut up. And I said, I'd like to address that. And I said, is that an order? He said, yes. I said, um, um, okay, well, uh, you know how bills and orders work, right? Uh, my my bill is uh, two to, uh, what did I say? Five silver dollars for every minute that I'm under your employee, and we can enter into that contract right on the record. And then he starts beating on his hammer. Sit down. I said, this is a kangaroo court. Get him out of here. And then they just, they, mm. two cops came on each side, and they snatched me up and dragged me out of there. And that was the end of that. Oh, I was man. out of gas after that. I had no gas left after that. So anyway, uh, yeah. go to the website, youhavetheright.com. Uh, send me a contact message. It looks like message. it's just for tax, like tax stuff. It's not. I'm just lazy. It's I just more, haven't updated it yet. Okay. That's why I say go to the contact link and send me a message. Hold on. Contact link. Where's I? I'm on there right now. Okay, send message. Here we go at the bottom. Okay, cool. And what's your name? T- Tad? And... Tad. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. All right, thank uh, I'll you. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay, right. thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, so final call for questions. If anybody has any questions... Raise your hand now by hitting star six. Otherwise, we're going to end the call. <laughs> uh, did you have any further questions? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. All right. No. We got somebody else here. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got more people. 917, go ahead. Dad, hey, this is- yeah, hey, this is Gavin Mail. I, I remember watching one of your your uh, land the old shows on YouTube you had with the uh, the Landhatton guy. He was an expert. That was really good, man. I really enjoyed yeah. it. What was his name? I pa- passed away. Uh, rest his soul. But anyways, yeah. I learned a lot from that. So thank you. Bob uh, Schaefer. Okay, so Bob Schaefer, yes, legend, man. He was amazing. So I, I'm sure. All right, so let me just. I was late on the call, but it sounds like. Uh, let's say I get a summons tomorrow. I'm getting getting a summons, and tomorrow morning I get, I get sued, and some guy sues me personally. He wants to collect on us on a small claims action. Let's say for five thousand dollars, he says I owe him. Uh, what what should I do? What are people? What, what should I do next with the summons? If you give me a recap on the process, or what's been having success? If it's a civil action, small claims, money damages, just myself as a as a sole party. You're suing me personally. Well, I would say what, contact what, 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 me through the website, youhavetheright.com, and we can work with you one-on-one with it. But to recap the general process, and there's more to it, but the general process, uh, Matt, go ahead. Basically, you'll get the summons in the mail. Okay, you'll open it up, you'll look at it. You'll write refuse for cause on the front of it in red ink. You'll put the paperwork in there 
that we tell you to put in there, okay? In with that, you'll put refuse for cause on the envelope. You'll put it in another envelope. The to address and the from address will be the court, or whoever sent it to you, you know, the attorney, whatever, whoever sent it to you, and you'll return it back to them certified mail. Sounds easy enough. And it's it's that simple. All right, Gavin, did you get that? Get in touch with me. That that's something. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got all the details. <laughs> okay. You have some of the and what details. happens if uh, now I've I've yeah. done that before. Uh, actually, just I I'd say I've done that personally before. I've had an experience. And what happened? You know, California, I got sued for unlawful detainer. It's a state action. I wrote on the envelope of the document, refused for cause, I sent it directly back to the court. Actually, I did a registered mail, not a certified mail. And it went back to the uh, clerk of the court. They got it. I thought I was home free. I told all my buddies I was good to go. Uh, then uh, a couple weeks later, the sheriff showed up at my house, and he says, oh, no, you, you, know, you didn't answer, you didn't do what you're supposed to do on this complaint. I had to go to court, motion the court, get the judgment set aside. So okay. what do you do in, so, a, in a case like that? So, Gavin, so Gavin, the what he told you is not the complete process. You have to contact us, and we'll okay. walk you through the complete process. Okay? Nice. And that's All why right. that happened. Thanks for the information. Yeah. And that's <laughs> okay. why that happened. Nice. All right. Thanks, Gavin. You got it, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay. 904 area code. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. My name is Kevin Jackson. I have a question with regards to... I'm a little bit further along in the process. I, I've just um, come to the knowledge of your, your information, but I've, I've all, I'm in the middle of a, a civil suit, and um, I'm representing myself. But I was wondering uh, if there still is um, – that we're at the point where the, the attorney is asking for a deposition. And so I was wondering uh, where do I go from there. Oh, you're already in a suit. Yeah, yeah, you're already in a suit. They've got jurisdiction now. Um, yeah. You know, oh my God. Yeah, you're already in the dungeon now. They got you chained up now. Um, well, if, there, there's. I, I think there's a way to deal with it, but it's something completely different. Yeah. Um, there is a way. There is a way to deal with it, um, but it is a little more difficult. Um, contact Tad about it. And then um, we'll we'll help you out. Did you get that, Kevin? Kevin, did you hit mute on your phone by accident, by any chance? Uh, I'm in I'm in um, Florida, and we're going through a hurricane. We just oh so it's, yeah it's okay. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's your excuse. Oh, I can't because of the hurricane. <laughs> Okay. All right. So contact me. We'll see what we can do. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 586 area code. Go ahead. Yes, sir. This is Jeff. I just wondered if. Oops. Jeff, what's that music? Here. Well, that's <laughs> my phone. Really? Okay. The. Uh, how about anything to do that I. This is couple years ago now, but I still have a warrant for my arrest for not showing up to court. Failed to appear. Anything you guys can do for me? I'd say that's over my head. How old is this warrant? Uh, three to four years. And okay. I got pulled over in another, another county, and they they had a court, and I said, um, that's not my court to go to, so I didn't go. They never really summons me to court. They uh, they had it on the docket, I guess, and they just told me, you got to appear. Well, so I've got three cities that I failed to appear to because of of one failed to appear at one court.
So they had a warrant out for me, so I got pulled over the third time, and the guy busted my window out to get me out of the car. I think that was a little excessive force for what my, uh, you know, what the police officer, policy enforcer uh, called all of his buddies. He had at least six to eight other policemen show up. and Well, so, Jeff, what I'm going to say is that's probably outside of... Uh, what we're discussing tonight and what we're offering, and that's kind of way over way over our heads. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I thought I'd ask. All right. All right. Thank okay. you, Jeff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, everybody, I want to thank you all very much. And, Matt, thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. And, thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, so again, if you need help with, uh, you know, how to stop a lawsuit when you get the summons, go to youhavetheright.com, send me a message through the contact link, and we'll get in touch with you. So until then, uh, thank you, everybody, and good night.